you're going to carve in designs, you need to start by carving in whatever you're going to carve in and then you cut off all your extra hair. Because I guarantee you, if you do it the other way around, you're going to cut hair off and wish you had it later. And we're going to cut this in relatively tight because we want to take a lot of this hair and it be the crest, okay? But the face and the beak we want really tight. And then what we're going to do is try to um, <laughs> wrap in part of the neck here and part of the body. If you have something that you're going to dye a different color, like for example this, is going to be cut shorter. But if I leave it long now, I can hold this out when I'm putting the separate color of dye on it. So leaving that length, if it's a small area like that, can help me have something to hang on to. It's intimidating when you have a lot of hair, but if you just go at it slow, kind of whittle it. Again, just like whittling with wood. See how that's now standing? Because I've left fill hair here. So a lot more of that still needs to come out, but now I'm gonna kind of angle upward into that. So I'm gonna start with his tail. Um, tails and ears tend to have more guard hairs, so they take, don't take dye as well. So if you can leave that on there longer, you have a better chance of it turning out. Okay. Put a little bit of dye here. And what this is gonna do is kind of help glue the hair down when I start pulling this down. And I'm not gonna pull huge chunks down, just a little bit at a time, pull it over onto the foil. Once you get the first layer, you have less chance of it moving on you because it's kind of glued to the full. And then you just keep adding dye. Notice I'm just pulling down a very little bit of hair at a time until you slowly get it all covered. And this ensures that you get the dye all the way down, all the way through. Okay, you get good even coverage. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this section, I'm gonna get it folded up, then I'm gonna get this section, and I'll have to pull the loop off to get right here. I'm gonna try to part this where the loop will go directly between these two sections. And that way, if he moves his head, he's not smearing dye everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna take my rat tail comb. And the hard part about this is they all want to turn their head and look around. You just kind of have to be patient and try to predict what they're going to do. And just remember, if you get a spot of dye out of place, it's not the end of the world. Then insurers take care of a whole lot of that. And I'm doing bigger draft print because if you did smaller, you'd be here all day drawing little shapes. So I won't like bigger pattern so it doesn't take all day to dye him in especially if you're doing a client's dog if you stand back and look at your dogs when you're putting patterns in them you can see if there's something missing if it looks like there's a blank area um, especially when you're doing animal prints leopard print or zebra giraffe you stand back and look you want to fill in any big voids Well, now I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to pull this hair down at the top. And at the top, it doesn't really matter if it's all the way down the skin because you kind of want it to kind of fade in. You don't want just like a straight line. I'm going to do this part just like we were doing earlier. Comb it up. It's already got a little bit of hairspray in it. And I'm kind of holding this at about a 30 degree angle. Just trying to kind of lean this mohawk. If you're not gonna get all of it to stand up on its own, but it takes way less hairspray if you can kind of get an angle going there on it. <laughs> 